Every year, a few climbers die by rappelling off the ends of their rope. There is a rappel transition technique that dramatically reduces the likelihood of that happening. Is it worth it? Hi there, I'm Jason. When we rappel, we want knots in the ends of our rope so that we can't rappel off of the ends. But every year, there are several accidents because climbers either don't want to or forget to add in those knots. Today, we are getting into a rappel transition that can help, but it's different than what most of us are used to and different or new always comes with its own risks. For this method to make sense, let's talk about rappelling off the ends of our rope. We can't fix don't want to tie those knots with a new system, but we can address forgetting to add the knots. So how is it that someone can forget? In our traditional rappel transition, we have to take out a knot that is in one rope end to thread our next rappel. That means as we secure the rope, we need to remember to add the knot back again. And this end is now our pull strand. So as we pull the rope, we also need to take the knot out of the other end so that it can fit through the anchor above as we pull it. Once again, we need to add it back in as we throw the ropes for the next rappel. Each retying of the knots is an opportunity to forget to do so. So what is this different technique and why does it mitigate forgetfulness? Besides being introduced to me by some climbing mentors, it is also briefly discussed in the Mountain Guide Manual by Mark Chauvin and Rob Coppolillo, a book I highly recommend and to which there is a link in the description. Let's go through the procedure step by step and then discuss the rationale. But the key is that we perform the transition without using a leashed connection to the anchor. As the first person comes down to the new anchor, they have one end of the rope attached to them with a bite knot. You'll see why as we complete this transition, and it's important. But for now, the climber has stopped their progress and makes their new anchor. Then they take the other end of the rope, which doesn't have a knot in it, more on that later, and threads it through the rappel point. Taking that threaded end, they make a new bite knot and clip it into their belay loop. From there, they take that same end and clove hitch it into their new anchor. They also pull more slack through the rappel point and add another locking carabiner. When the second climber comes down, the first climber gives that free locker to the second for them to clip into the anchor. With both climbers clove to the anchor near the same end of the rope, the first climber is free to come out of their original bite knot and the team is free to pull the rope and set the middle mark for the next rappel. Again, we are not adding a stopper knot to this pulled end. The first climber will set their rappel below the other climber who will set their device higher up. This pre-rigging of devices means both climbers can check each other's device, which is an added safety benefit. But the major benefit is that for the first climber's rappel, the rope is now fixed. One end of the rope is literally attached to the first climber, meaning they cannot rappel off that end of the strands. And the other end, not free, cannot cause the rope to pull through because the knot on our harness will stop us with the rope being fixed by the second's device as long as we truly have the middle of the rope positioned at the rappel point. The second climber down can now come out of their clove hitch, being secured by their device and the fireman's belay created by the weight of the first climber heading down. Now, we are back to where we started. The first climber is at the new anchor with a bite knot clipped to their harness. So, here is the rationale. In a standard rappel, our lives are not attached to the rope at the anchor positions. Our leashes keep us attached. In this different procedure, the first climber must clip into a bite knot in order to connect to the anchor and come off rappel. So there isn't the same ability to forget to make that knot. And the second knot in the other rope isn't even required at all, provided the pre-rigged devices are done at each transition, fixing the rappel rope in place for the first climber down. The second climber down is blocked by the bite knots at the new anchor. So what do we like about it? I do think we are much less likely to either forget or just not want to haul to us the end of our pulled rope to add a stopper knot as with the standard procedure. 
It also means we can't forget to take the stopper knot out of the rope end that is to be pulled through the anchor above, which would result in the rope getting stuck above if we did forget. I see some risk in making sure we disconnect from the correct original bite knot when both climbers are at the new lower anchor and are readying to pull the rope. On the plus side though, there are two sets of eyes to double check that as part of the process. There is also potentially risk for the second climber while still above when the first climber first clips into the lower anchor and unweights the rappel lines. Now the second climber doesn't have a fireman's belay. Anytime we pre-rig rappels on the ropes using the leashless technique or not, I generally think it's a good idea to add in the backup friction hitch and clip it to our harness if the stance will allow us to align between the anchor and the person rappelling, because then my partner can check that too before heading down. And if the stance won't allow that because we'd be yanked around, I tend to add the backup onto the rope and clip to the anchor then I immediately transfer it to my harness as soon as the rope goes slack. That doesn't eliminate the risk, but it greatly reduces it. Well, what do you think? Tell us what you like or dislike about the procedure in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share if you want to support us. For more information, you can go to our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. You can see a more traditional multi-pitch rappel transition but on ice, or you can stick to rock by checking out our entire rock climbing safety series. We'll see you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.